everybody, this is Mandy in Gladstone, Michigan. You're watching Picks with Dave. Go Cowboys! a week five edition of Picks with David. Thanks for joining me. And we've got ourselves a big weekend here, starting with the game in London. Five big games to talk about. And we'll begin with the Green Bay Packers and the New York Giants. So from Tottenham Stadium in London, England, we've got ourselves the new york giants at three and one playing against the three and one green bay packers and the giants have looked really good this year for the most part their only loss has come to the cowboys and that was in dallas whereas i think their defense is much improved saquon barkley is healthy for the giants they're able to run the ball the offensive line is not as bad as it has been Daniel Jones is not turning the ball over every time, you know, that they get the ball. And so they are able to make some offense happen. They've got the play action passing working. They don't have quite the wide receiving core that they thought they would. Got a couple of injuries and Kenny Galladay has been ineffective. But uh, for the most part, the Giants are a very solid team. The problem is, is that they're going to be playing against the Green Bay Packers who's really starting to come on. Every week it looks like they're getting better and better. The rookie receivers are starting to really come on here for Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. Christian Watson, along with Romeo Dobbs, and they've got that great two-headed running game along with, uh, you know, they got A.J. Dillon and Aaron Jones. And I think that with their defense, the way that it has been playing, Defense travels. I'm going to take the Green Bay Packers to beat the Giants in London. Game number two is the Detroit Lions, the highest scoring team in the NFL against the New England Patriots. Both teams come into this game with a one and three record. And for me, you know, I look at the high-powered offense that Detroit's put together, but they just don't seem to have the defensive cohesiveness to keep themselves in games. As for New England, you know, they're down their starting quarterback in Matt Jones, so they bring in Zappi to be the quarterback with Brian Hoyer down, you know, injured. So both these teams you know, really need to do what works best for them. Detroit just needs to keep doing what they're doing on offense. The offense has been dynamic. The running game has been working for them. They haven't turned the ball over a whole heck of a lot. You know, Jared Goff is playing well with the receivers that he has. For New England over here, you know, we are looking at a team that needs to play defense and run the football. If they can control the time of possession and keep that Detroit Lions offense off the field, they give themselves a great opportunity to win this game. Damian Harris, Ramondre Stevenson, those are the running backs you're going to be seeing for the Patriots. They need to get a lot of carries. They need to move the chains with little dinks and dunks with the inexperienced rookie quarterback and hope that it's enough to hold off the high-powered offense of this Detroit Lion team. 
but I think that it will not be enough. I think that even though New England put up a big fight against Green Bay last week, I think Detroit comes in and wins the game against the Patriots. Our third game of the weekend is the 1 and 3 Pittsburgh Steelers at the 3 and 1 Buffalo Bills. Pittsburgh has played some tough close games thus far this season, as have the Buffalo Bills. After they blew out the first two teams of the year, they've struggled offensively the last two weeks of this, of this season. The Buffalo Bills defense is one of the best in the league, and they're looking at a subpar offense coming to town in the Pittsburgh Steelers. But they're turning the ball over here to Kenny Pickett, which will be his first start of the year as he takes over for Mitchell Trubisky. I think that Pittsburgh needs to concentrate on running the football and playing good defense. Obviously, they're going to have to hold off on that big-time play offense that the Buffalo Bills have. They've got weapons all over the field. And so, for me, I look at this game, I think it's an obvious mismatch. I think Pittsburgh can make some things happen, and it'll be a lot of fun to watch and see what the rookie picket can do against that really strong Buffalo defense. But I'm going to take the Buffalo Bills to win the game against the Steelers. Sunday night football on NBC, and it's a big rivalry in the AFC North. We've got the Cincinnati Bengals and the Baltimore Ravens. Both teams come in here with a 2-2 two and two record. Baltimore, in their two losses, have trailed for a total of 14 seconds. And, you know, that's really what I think has defined their season thus far. Critical mistakes by the head coach, you know, not kicking field goals, going for it. Lamar Jackson turned the ball over last week. They clearly had Buffalo on the ropes. You know, at one point in time, they had a huge lead against the Miami Dolphins, and they let it slip away. Baltimore's defense is turning the ball over a lot, but they're not stopping anybody when it comes to yards, moving it up and down the field. Cincinnati, this last week, they've had 11 days to prepare for Baltimore, and last year they let them up to the tune of 41 points each time they played them. Cincinnati swept them last year, and their offensive line really started to look like it was gelling and coming together in the game against Miami. Now, I originally was thinking that I was going to take the Cincinnati Bengals in this matchup, but I think Baltimore's got a lot to prove. I think that they were embarrassed here this last week that they didn't win the game. It's in prime time. I don't see Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens losing to Cincinnati. I'm going to take the Ravens in this game. Monday Night Football on ESPN. It's the Las Vegas Raiders at 1-3 coming into the 3-1 Kansas City Chiefs. The Raiders have struggled defensively thus far this season, and that's not a good combination when the Kansas City Chiefs are coming to town. They hit on all cylinders last week against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and the Chiefs, of course, are playing at home. The Raiders want to showcase their new offense and Devontae Adams. They have not been getting the ball to their big play tight end, Darren Waller, and I think it shows a lot, you know, when it comes to some of the drives that they have put together this year. If they would be getting him the ball a little bit more, I think they could have picked up some more wins. They want to blame it a little bit on the defensive side of the ball, but I don't think that the offense is holding up their end of the bargain either. Kansas City's defense is number one in the NFL against the run. Of course, if you have a big lead, the other team isn't going to run the football, and that's what happened with Tampa Bay. I think they only had five carries in the whole game for negative three yards by Leonard Fournette. Kansas City is looking to dominate through the air, and now they've got their running game going. Behind that big offensive line that was new last year, they're starting to gash people. 
Clyde Edwards Hilaire, Isaiah Pacheco, and then out of the backfield with receptions, you've got Pacheco, you have Clyde, and then there's also Jarek McKinnon. I think we're going to see a lot more of that. While the wide receivers have not been spectacular with big plays down the field, I think that's the new wrinkle for the Chiefs offense. I'll take Kansas City to win it on Monday Night Football. That's going to bring us to our spotlight players of this weekend. And once again, we're looking at the starting quarterback, Kenny Pickett of the Pittsburgh Steelers, making his first start. You know, what kind of game are we going to see from him? Are they going to open it up and let him try to make some deep shots against that strong New England secondary? Or are they going to continue with kind of the ball control offense that they have shown thus far this season? where they try to run the football, dink and dunk, and just try to play it safe. I think they're going to open it up, and I think Pittsburgh is going to have a game for Buffalo. I don't think they're going to win, but I think it'll be a good showing for Pickett the rookie. As for New England playing against the Detroit Lions, once again, I think they got to control the clock. they got to run the football, and that means a lot of Damian Harris. Harris is in his third year out of Alabama here, and he's been the lead back for them the last couple of years. In his time in New England, he gets in the red zone. They hand it to him, and he scores the touchdowns. But he can make some big runs. When the offensive line opens up some holes for him, he can make some big plays. And I think that there's going to be a lot of opportunities for that to happen against this porous Detroit defense. And so that's your spotlight players of this weekend. So there you have it. There's your week five picks with Dave. Thanks for joining me for another edition right here on YouTube and Facebook. Be sure to like the video, subscribe, leave a comment if you'd like, and we'll see you again for Thursday Night Football to start week number six.